Hi, my name is JL Brown from The Adventures of Gerard Dupree, and I'd like to invite you to see the world through the piercing gray eyes of the sleuth of New Orleans. Once upon a time, in an awkward party far away, um, I was sitting on a couch by myself, I was writing stories, I was working um, with my programs on my computers, and I had a million and one of my own comic books and things in my head that I was trying to write, and I was going to Full Sail to get a Master's of Creative Writing degree. Um, and I met this lovely gentleman who was also sitting by himself in a party far away, and we sat and started talking on the couch about Gerard Dupree, and somehow this beautiful moment happened when we both kind of agreed on this thing and it just kind of developed over many 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 sweet tomatoes and <laughs> other restaurants and just sitting there discussing this thing and building it. And at first it had this first incarnation which was hokey, it was just a bunch of friends getting together reading the scripts and we were all powwowing around the table with our notebooks. It was kind of the friends of the round table version if you could imagine like when you get together with friends and play Dungeons and Dragons and everybody has their own input into it, like they all have something they want to add and we had a lot of the characters who were voice actors also saying what they wanted their characters to do. It was really fun but it wasn't where the story needed to go. The characters were not the characters, they were cartoon versions of the characters. <laughs> and then it became more serious and then it became beautiful and just unique and gorgeous and this magical thing happened and it became Gerard Dupree. Oh gosh, now where to start? Chinatown would be the big one. Everybody thinks Chinatown right away. But uh, the, the whole Dick Tracy radio show from when I was younger, that was amazing. The Shadow, Dick Tracy. Um, of course, you think of the sleuth character from Roger Rabbit. Um, very, you know, there's darkness, but there's humor and light in the darkness because you can't have shadows without light. And uh, just that whole stereotype of the sleuth in the dark room and the gorgeous woman who walks in and she's a vixen and she's also a villain or she's innocent or there's some hook there to the like Ming vase of mystery and then this one guy be him a smoker or a drinker or somebody who's broken in their life somehow fixes everybody else's problems but still has all the weight of the world on their shoulders. How can you not be attracted to that? It's just good drama. Oh my gosh, it's so hard to have a favorite story, but I'm gonna have to say the one with the food fight. From the very first um, incarnation there was a big old pie fight in one of the shows and listening to it was hilarious because you just in your mind could see these characters in this totally zany situation where the chefs were allergic to hazelnuts and people were having horrible reactions and there was pies throwing and girls screaming and I just, it was hokey but it was worth it. <laughs> it was just funny. <laughs> I have a favorite character. I I have two favorite characters, but my first favorite is Dottie all the way. I love Dottie. I've always loved Dottie. I love the strong female who comes in and kind of tells the boys what's going on, reins everybody in when they get out of control. And I also really like Juliet. <laughs> Same thing, kind of there. But the wonderful thing about Juliet and Dottie is that not only are they female leads, but they play a huge part. Even though they are secondary, they're not... Dupree himself, but he could not continue the stories without them. He needs them. They're anchors. And they're not like the damsels in distress. They are the ones that are truly help solve the crime, who really go all the way and bring it to the forefront. And they're really strong in their own right. Brendan Rogers. Yes, I would have to say my favorite voice actor is Brendan Rogers, because when you listen to him, he's not only sultry, but he brings like depth like all of his speeches are dead on they sound like the character they sound like it sounds like in your head when you're coming up with the stories um brendan has a 
perfect voice. He just kind of rumbles through these lines and his emotions come through when he speaks and you just listen to the lines and you just know that there's this guy saying this in your, he's, he's just there and it's so perfect. A lot of the characters are perfectly dead on, but I love listening for him. Uh, I know Charles and Brie, um, personally, and I have to say Brie is by far one of my favorite people in the real world as well as on the radio. Um, like that kindness and true genuine heart is actually her. Like that's her voice, that's her, that, like she is the character, so when you hear the character in the show, you're, you're, that's really her. So I would have to say Brie is genuinely that superhero good guy in the real world as well as in, in the audio world as well, so. And then there's Charles, who is the do-everything. Um, he is great at everything he does, and he's a master of all trades and a jack of all trades. It's really hard to find somebody like that, that can move from thing to thing to thing to thing. And uh, I think that's great with Charles here, too, is he can move from character to character to character to character. And he always does it well, he does it right. He's just, he's a joy to work with, and he's a joy to know in the real world. So there's, that's Charles in a nutshell. <laughs> oh my gosh, dealing with Bo. Um, Bo is so creative, like his mind and his talents are so out here that when you walk into his house or walk around him, he's got so many things that, he, that you just, you, you want to come in and go, I'm going to do this radio show, I'm going to come in, I'm going to do it now. Two hours later, you're going, can we start? <laughs> because I'm so distracted by all these wonderful things. And it's not like things that you look at and you're like, oh, yeah. No, it's like things that you're like, oh, my God, that's amazing. Or, oh, listen to that music. That's awesome. Or, oh, look at the score. And, oh, look what he's writing here. And look at this statue. Look at this artwork. Look at this. And you get in and, like, two hours have passed. And you didn't realize it was two hours. And when you're recording, suddenly you're like, oh, I'm so exhausted. Why am I so exhausted? Why am I starving? Because I spent two hours <laughs> enjoying Bo and, and everything. And he's just, he's so talented. And he does so many things. And he's all over the place all the time that... Sometimes you're like, well, I haven't seen Bo in six months. Is he still around? I don't know. And meanwhile, he's like, I saw you yesterday. <laughs> it's like, no, Bo, my daughter's three now. <laughs> oh my God, we're in season three. <laughs> we were, I still remember we were in season one going, is this really going to happen again? Uh, Bo and I were sitting over at the Village Inn eating pie going, are we doing this again? Um, which was crazy because my daughter was just a little teeny tiny baby taking a nap in her in her bassinet while we were at a table in a diner writing scripts for a dark noir radio show going oh this is not gonna happen again but let's go ahead and give it a try um, and Bo was like very he was very self-conscious he didn't think it was going to happen like he's like oh I'm gonna write six six episodes and we might cast voices and I was like no you're gonna do it you're gonna do it it's gonna be amazing and now we're sitting here three seasons later going ha we did it let's keep it going <laughs> it's new blood new excitement darker stories let's go <laughs> I think in this day and age radio drama is probably more beloved than it was in the past. We've been so desensitized by the video and the movie and the pictures in front of us, and yet nobody ever has time to pick up a book and read, which is why audiobooks my number one go-to. But how do we make an audiobook so much more? Well, we create a movie, and the best film director is you, because everything is happening in your own mind. You can be washing dishes, vacuuming the floor, driving to work, driving across country, watching the kids, and you can still enjoy this wonderful story with the pictures in your own head and the drama is right there for you to film and direct in your own mind's eye. Listening to something like this is not only educational, but it also is an exercise in your mind and your imaginations. You can listen to a movie and you don't know what's going on if you're not watching the screen. You can listen to a radio show and you know everything. It's all there and the ability to exercise 
your own imagination, your own dreams, and your own ability to create stories is there in a radio show. It's one of the first storytelling, modern storytelling devices, and it was one of the very first historic storytelling devices. People would sit around a campfire and tell stories. This is the same thing. We're not sitting around a campfire, but we're all listening to stories. We're learning how to listen, we're learning how to communicate, and we're learning how to keep dreams alive. And it's the dreamers that build the world, not those who follow blindly. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening to our show and if you'd really like to support us we hope you would you can buy stuff from the show at the cafe press store and don't forget to visit us at the website and listen to more episodes of gerard dupree <laughs>